Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our play is entitled, The Side of Truth. This is the story of life in the service for women, and is in particular the narrative of Dr. Annette Rosenstiel, who was among the very first American women to join the Army. A warm, human, and exciting story of adventure, as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... You know, it's a matter of opinion whether the WAC secretary is more efficient than the WAC radio operator, but it is a fact that the Women's Army Corps is the best solution to many a young gal's problem on how to get the most out of life. Yes, ma'am. Whether you specialize in cryptography or become a technician in an Army chemical lab, you'll be doing interesting work. What you do will be important to America, and your family will be proud of you. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station today. See what is offered for your benefit when you enlist in the Women's Army Corps. And now your Army presents the Proudly We Hail production, The Side of Truth. In New York City, along busy Park Avenue, the scurrying cab drivers rarely pause for anything less than mayhem. If they did... In the blocks between 68th and 69th Streets, they might see towering over the intersection a modern building, strangely quiet in spite of its monstrous bulk. The cabbies might well look up at this colossus of stone and steel and read what's inscribed there. We are of different opinions at different hours, but we may be said to be of one heart on the side of truth. For this is Hunter College, a part of the vast public educational system of New York City, where over 9,000 young women daily pursue the advantages of higher education. Dr. Rosenstiel? Uh, Dr. Rosenstiel? Oh, yes, Miss Martin. What can I do for you? Uh, Doctor, I just wanted to thank you on behalf of the other members of the class. I wanted to say that I thought you were by far our most interesting instructor. Oh, Miss Martin, I'm afraid my colleagues wouldn't like that statement one bit. <laughs> well, it's true. It must be wonderful to be able to do all the things you've done, traveling all over the world that way. Seeing all those people, visiting all those strange places? Yes, it was, but it also took a great deal of study and work. I know. Don't you like school? Oh, yes, but... Well, I'd, I'd like to do something important. Feel like I was striking out on my own for a change. Oh, you don't think schooling is important? Yes, I guess it is, but... Well, I don't know what I think. Uh, Miss Martin, are you doing anything right now for the next half hour or so? Well, no, Dr. Rosenstiel. Explorations was my last class for the day. Oh, then you come along with me. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Don't turn around unless you can stand a shot. What? Annette! Annette Rosenstiel! <laughs> oh, they say if you live in New York oh. long enough, you'll meet everyone you've ever known in your whole life. <laughs> well, how are you, Peg? I'm wonderful, Annette, just wonderful. What are you doing here at Hunter? Well, I'm on the staff here now. Oh, we have come up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I read on the bulletin board that you were going to be here this afternoon recruiting. Mm, I'm trying to get some of the senior girls interested in our OCS program. As an ex-Women's Army Corps officer, you should remember. Oh, I'll never forget. <laughs> oh, by the way, Peg, I'd like you to meet a student of mine. Alice Martin, this is Captain Scholes. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. Uh, hello. Did I hear you say that Dr. Rosenstiel was in the WAC? She certainly was. Y you got out a captain, didn't you, Annette? No, I didn't bring Alice here to talk about me. Did I hear her call you Dr. Rosenstiel, or do my ears deceive me? <laughs> no, that's right, Peg. Well, I'll be a son of a gun, you made it. Just like you said you would. Mm -hmm. Last year at Columbia. Uh, don't tell me. I know all the other details. You took your doctorate in anthropology and wrote your thesis about the motu. 
Oh, Miss Martin, we do owe you an apology. You, you see, I haven't seen Annette since uh, 1945 in New Guinea. Yeah. <laughs> well, shouldn't we put this off for another day? No, no. Um, I've got a better idea. I'm through here now. Let's all go around the corner and have a cup of coffee. I'd like to tell you about the Women's Army Corps, and the best way I can do it is by telling you about... Annette Rosensteel, Doctor of Philosophy in Anthropology from Columbia University. Oh, that is some mouthful. <laughs> well, I'm for the coffee, but that other thing sounds extremely dull. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw Annette was early in 1943. The war was pretty well underway by then. The headlines weren't all they should be. As one of the first WAC recruits to go through basic training, I was impatiently holding down a job, interviewing applicants in a small office in the basement arcade of Radio City. There, Corporal, I don't think I've skipped anything. Uh, let me see. Uh, Miss Bitterman, I, um, I don't know quite what to say about your application. Oh, is there anything wrong? No, no, quite the contrary, but are you sure this is what you want to do? Oh, absolutely. I usually don't exercise this sort of curiosity with all the recruits, but could you tell me why? Well, let's say it's because of that poster over there. The army needs linguists. Mm -hmm. well, fine, but aren't you gilding the lily a bit? I, I don't understand. Look at your application. Graduate of Hunter College. Master's degree in education from New York University. You studied at Mills College, at the Sorbonne in Paris. Still, you want to be a private in the United States Army. <laughs> For $50 a month. For $50 a month. <laughs> well, Corporal, a job needs doing, and joining the Women's Army Corps is the best way I can help do it. I'm sorry, Miss Bitterman. I never should have questioned you. <laughs> it's all right, Corporal. And I do hope you'll be able to call me Annette. Okay, Annette. And since we're going to be in the same outfit, why don't you call me Peggy? I didn't see Annette again for almost six months. I'd heard that she'd led her class through basic training at Camp Oglethorpe, Georgia, and had been recommended for officers' candidate school at the WAC Training Center, Fort Des Moines, Iowa, and then I lost her trail. In the meantime, I was finally sent along the same road to OCS and commissioned a second lieutenant, and then with a new set of orders, I was transferred to the Presidio, right outside of San Francisco. Lieutenant Margaret Schulz reporting for duty. Peggy. Peggy Scholes. Annette Bitterman. Oh, you made I... it. You got your commission. So did you, Lieutenant. Oh, even more. I'm now Lieutenant Rosensteel. I was married in August. Oh, I guess there isn't anything you can't accomplish if you set your mind to it. <laughs> well, it wasn't that difficult. Ray and I had been going together for a long time. You know, Annette, you're my prize recruit. I think I've told everybody about you. Oh, you're not telling me a thing. That's how I found out you were at Fort Des Moines and knew about your transfer here. Oh, incidentally, my orders here were classified. Sounds like we're going to be the new secret weapon. Almost. Well, I suspect we're going to be a part of the first Women's Army Corps group to go to the Pacific Theater of Operations. Lieutenant Scholes, I hate to take you to task for something as insignificant as this, but if you're going to do this job, I suggest you do it right or not at all. I'm sorry, Major. But ever since we heard that we were going to ship out, I just can't seem to concentrate. We on the post here certainly appreciate the way you wax have volunteered to help rather than sit around awaiting transport. But I do think the admonition still goes. That'll be all. It won't happen again, sir? I'm sure it won't. Yes? Of course. Send him right in. Colonel Miller. Good to oh. see you. Hello, Hugh. It's good to be back in the States. When did you get in? Oh, about an hour ago. Incidentally, Hugh, you've certainly improved the scenery around here since the last time. The wax? Oh, <laughs> I don't know how much of an improvement it is. Women belong in the home, not on an army post. Oh, you sound just like an old bachelor. Uh, maybe so. Whatever, Hugh, as post-intelligence officer, maybe you can find someone to do a bit of translating for me. What language? Uh, mostly French. I have a local administrator from New Caledonia with me. Washington wants his story, and he wants to get back to Namia. He's technically under no obligation to stay, so I felt if I could get it done here... Well, we had a man come through here last week, but now I don't have... He doesn't have to be briefed. I'll supply the questions. I'm afraid you're out of luck. No one around here who has the fluency that type of questioning would require. Well, what about one of these wax? If you want the enemy to know about it before Washington does, I'd say fine. Oh, I'll take that chance. Okay, you're the boss. 
Sergeant, will you see if you can find Lieutenant Rosenstiel and send her in here? Lieutenant Rosenstiel, is that the girl? Yes, according to her record, she should be qualified to do the job. You don't have to be so enthusiastic about it. Colonel, are you a gambling man? I'd like to prove a point. I'll bet you the most expensive dinner in town that no matter how much you impress on this girl, the importance of security... I'll still manage to find out everything about this man of yours from the size of his family to the number of heads he has drying in his backyard. You, these people, are as civilized as you or I, but I'll still take you up on that bet. Yes? Send her in. You sent for me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, sit down, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, uh, this is Colonel Miller. How do you do? Uh, Lieutenant, I have a bit of a problem for you. You noticed the native in the outer office? Oh, yes. By his dress, I'd say he must be a chief of some sort. Melanesian, probably. You seem to know a great deal about him already. Oh, well, I've always been interested in cultures and peoples. Mostly through my languages, you know. Languages? Yes, sir. I speak several. Do you think you can figure out what this fellow would say? Well, yes, it shouldn't be too difficult. He's probably from New Caledonia. More than likely, he understands some French and some pidgin English in addition to whatever his own local dialect might be. Well, I'll be. Well, if you'll excuse me, yeah, you can use my office as long as you want. You won't forget our dinner appointment, will you, Colonel? No, Hugh, I don't intend to. Lieutenant, I think you'll do just fine with this man, just fine. The only thing I have to stress is security. Under no circumstances will you discuss this man or what he says with anyone. Anyone, Lieutenant, do you hear me? Yes, Colonel, I hear you. Getting a breather, Lieutenant? Oh, yes, Major. I guess you have to take a break after all that questioning. Uh, yes, Major. Seems like a pretty interesting fellow. Yes, Major. Would you like a cigarette? Uh, no, Major. Still at it, Lieutenant? Yes, Major. You've been questioning that man for over five hours. Yes, Major. You intend to go through the night with all this? Yes, Major. Would you like a cigarette? No, Major. You're finished, Lieutenant? Yes, Major. Did Colonel Miller find out everything he wanted to know? Yes, Major. Lieutenant Rosenstiel, there are limits even to security. Yes, Major. At least tell me this. Does that native come from a family of headhunters? I've still got my head on, haven't I, Major? <laughs> Yes, Major. <laughs> oh, yes, Major. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. And I must say, Hugh, you're a good sport about it. I still think this is the exception that proves the rule. Oh, come on, Hugh. Don't be such a soft. Was admit it. Women are people. Well, I guess you're right. And mark my word. Once they start making their impact on this man's army, you're going to have a hard time getting rid of them. And what's more, nobody's going to want to. Here, Colonel, let's uh, finish up this wine. And a delicious wine it is, too, Hugh, my boy. Incidentally, while we're at it, let's toast the Woman's Army Corps. Long may they serve. Better still, a toast to Lieutenant Annette Rosenstiel and the Women's Army Corps. Amen to that. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Side of Truth. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. If you're a young lady in the clerical or business world and you want to get a job where you can really get ahead, the Women's Army Corps will offer you the best chances for advancement. You see, as a WAC, the skill that you've already gained as a stenographer, secretary, budget clerk, or auditor will automatically place you in a skilled group of young women in the service. You'll find that your experience will mean a lot to you in getting ahead in this outstanding group of America's foremost women. You'll find opportunity is waiting for you when you step inside your local United States Army recruiting station. Gals, don't let opportunity pass you by. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Side of Truth. Annette Rosenstiel and I left the States early in 1944, among the first group of WACs assigned for duty in the Pacific Theater of Operations. You can well imagine that it was quite a thrill. 
Places like Australia and New Zealand had always seemed like some remote fairyland off in the dim recesses of our imagination. And now, for the first time, we were to discover that Sydney, Brisbane, Canberra were growing alive modern cities. We had just got settled in Australia when we heard that we were moving up to New Guinea. I must say that I felt like the heroine in some B movie, but Annette seemed relatively calm about it all. Until one day, about a month after we'd arrived at Port Moresby. Oh, Peg, it's beautiful. Isn't it something? Look, mm. you can see all the way through there. Yeah. See how the sun cuts through the droplets of rain? Looks like a scene from another age. Mm. Oh, Peg, what a wonderful idea. A picnic right here at the edge of the rainforest. <laughs> I must admit, this is not an original idea. I copied it from Terence. We were here last week. Oh. <laughs> Those Aussie soldiers are certainly well-versed in jungle tactics. <laughs> here, come on, sit on these stones. Have a sandwich. All righty, I just might do that. <sighs> oh! Oh! What? Oh, there. They're behind you with a head shot off a snake. A coral snake. Oh, where did the shot come from? Over there by the path back to the road. Oh, look, coming out of the jungle. A native. A cannibal. Oh, there haven't been cannibals anywhere near these coastal areas for 20 years or more. Well, he looks like a cannibal. That was quite a shot. He's coming. Shh. Bueno, Shinavada. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for killing the snake. Yes. It is time Guy Guy's life had been ended. Oh. I've noticed him in this clearing before. Oh. He had become a nuisance. You speak English? Yes, and very well, I might add. I was quite fortunate to be able to attend the University of Sydney after mission school in Port Moresby. <laughs> there is something amusing. Well, I, uh, I thought you were a cannibal. My people have never been cannibals. We are great sailors and fishermen. Uh, who are your people? I am of the Moto. Oh. Well, I must thank you for saving my life. You're very skilled with the use of that rifle. It is a very fine instrument. American Garam. Oh, oh, you're in the Papuan infantry. Yes, but now I must go. You must come and see our village someday. It lies on the sea right over that hill. I think you will find it of interest. Oh, wait. We don't even know your name. My name is Boro. It means pig. Oh, I don't, don't think I'm rude, but that is a funny thing to be called. Well, it's not a bad name among my people. It only means that a family quarrel had taken place before I was born. You see, we of the Motu have great esteem for family life. I would think you also had great admiration for many other things. My no Sinabada. I must go now. Uh, my no Sinabada. You said that when you came, too. What does it mean? It is very simple. My no is our greeting. It means peace. Sinabada means white woman. Oh, well, my no, Boro. We hope to see you again soon. The pleasure will be all mine. You know, it's strange how much you can learn about a people from one short conversation. What do you mean? His pride of family, his bearing, even his greeting. What's more, he is an amazing marksman. Now, I'm sure he comes from a people of great manual skill. You learned all that from one conversation. The only thing I could remember was that he wasn't a cannibal. Hey, I think we'd best be getting out of here. Looks like a rain squall is coming up. Mm, you're right. We'd better save our picnic for another time. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I'd had enough excitement to laugh me for a while. <laughs> yes, you're right. It has been quite a day. You're awfully quiet. I... I can't get over that native yesterday. Mm. I talked to Terence at lunch. You know, he's with Ango. That's the Aussie New Zealand administrative unit that's supposed to be the interim control over these islanders. Yeah, I know. It seems Boros killed about 200 snipers in the past month with his sharp-shooting rifle. Did he say anything about his home, the way he lived? Mm, not much. He did say Boros was a chief of some sort. A chief? Well, not exactly. It, it seems the Motu are governed by a council of elders, a group of tribal big shots. Borrow is kind of the local Joe DiMaggio, and he sits in as part of the council. Well, that settles it. I'm going to go. Go where? Borrow invited us to visit his village, and I'm going to go. You can't go to a native village all by yourself. But I'm not going all by myself. You're going with me. I am not. Besides, it's probably off limits. It's not. I've already asked. 
All we need is an Aussie guide, and Terrans can serve admirably. Now, tomorrow, as soon as we're off duty, I'll borrow the captain's uh, uh, jeep and we'll wait, be... Wait, wait a second. Not so fast. That'll get us there about dark. If you expect me to go among cannibals at that time of the night, you're absolutely crazy. No one in these right bicycles. Soon, my brain's shaking. <laughs> We're almost there. Those fires up ahead must be the village. Oh. Oh, hey. Listen. Yes. Drums. I've heard them for the past ten minutes. Why did I ever let you talk me into this? Oh, oh Annette. I'm really frightened. Don't be silly. These are civilized people. How do you know? They must be having a ceremony of some sort. They're probably boiling somebody in oil. Come on. Let's walk over here and watch. Oh. I know. It's oh, my no, Boro. You startled us. I'm terribly sorry. Captain Terrence said I should wait for you. He will be along shortly. I wish you'd buy yourself some noisy shoes. That is one article of your culture we of the motu have difficulty adjusting to. <laughs> well, here we are. I knew you would come. I could tell by your curiosity that you were not satisfied with our conversation of yesterday. You wish to know more about us. You're a very unusual people. You have uh, chosen a good evening to come. We are celebrating a marriage. A marriage? Yes, if you had been here half an hour earlier, you would have seen Chaplain Warren perform the ceremony. Our Chaplain Warren? Yes. We are Christians. You seem to have great respect for our Western ideas. Yes, we have always been a people of progress. We learn many things from you. You can also learn from us. And so, Ray, these past months have passed quickly. The more I study about the Motu, the more fascinated I become. Uh, you say there's nothing in the library about them. And that seems strange. They're such an interesting people, I would think that someone at one time or another would have documented something. I'm glad to hear that you're saving my letters. Somewhere in the back of my mind is a vague idea of what I'd like to do when the war is over. And maybe these letters of mine could be a very real part of it. I've always been interested in peoples and cultures through my languages, but now... Borrow! Make them go back, I'm getting sick! No, Borrow, no, it's wonderful! Oh. Once we're around the edge of the island... We will be on the sheltered side, and the wind will not blow with such fury. Uh, uh, what is this type of boat called, Boro? Lakatoi? Very good, Sinaba. <laughs> you know the name of the animal that swims in the sea? Uh, Karune? Correct. And the man who catches the fish? Um, Hauda Tauna. You will soon speak the Motu dialect like one of us, Sinaba. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so, Boro. Yeah, we've got to go back. One moment more, and we will be rounding the bend. Oh. There we are. I oh, feeling better, Peg. Don't think I have any feelings left. If you are free next weekend, I thought we would go fishing. And then I could show you how my people use poison to catch fish. I think you'd better count me out. That's a little too rich for my blood. And you, Sinabata. You will join us next week. Uh, you, you, you'd better tell him, Annette. Um, Boro, this is one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. I think I know, Sinabada. You are returning to your own land. You're right. The war here is over, Sinabada. Even though I have been young again, learning with you the joys of my own people, I still knew the day would come when you would leave and return to your own family. Oh. Well, so it, it's goodbye, Boron. I'll, I'll never forget you. Or your magnificent people. Friends depart, and memory takes them to her cavern, pure and deep. After Annette left, I stayed on at Port Moresby for another couple of months until the base there was closed, and then I was reassigned, re-enlisted. Now here I am. I haven't seen Annette since 1945. Oh, Captain, what a wonderful story. It certainly is. Uh, Dr. Rosenstiel, how did you happen to go to Columbia? On the GI Bill of Rights. 
And you studied about the motor? You know, that was the strange thing. Of all the places in the world the Army could have sent me, they sent me to the one place where no anthropological studies had ever been made. I had to write a completely original thesis about the Motu. <laughs> Everyone must have been flabbergasted. <laughs> they were. A native people that seemed to prosper with white culture. And yet, uh, do you still hear from Goro? Oh, regularly. Oh, he was a great help with my thesis. He's writing now that the Motu are becoming more and more acquainted with how Americans live. They'll probably have bobby socks, jukeboxes, and jive the next time you go there. <laughs> no, somehow I doubt it. Now, that there are people with such tremendous dignity. They'll be attracted by only the finer things of our civilization. It's the way they stand. A as long as they can walk and stand as they do, they'll never do anything to be ashamed of. Well, thank you for the story, Captain. My thanks to you, too, Dr. Evansfield. Anything wrong, Al? You're still not satisfied, is that it? No pat answers or solutions. I guess that's it, Doctor. I, I thought you were going to tell me what to do. Stay in school or join the WAC. That's something for you to solve, Alice. You can do both, you know. There's a very real place in the Women's Army Corps for women with an education. And in turn, a very real place in education for women with WAC training. More than that, Alice, a very real place in life. And these days, more than ever, it's important to be fully prepared to play a mature role in life. Well, thank you both very much. I, I guess it is up to me to make up my own mind. <laughs> Good. You think it over well. I'm sure whatever decision you make will be a wise one. And who knows? I might be seeing you one of these days. Here is an important announcement for capable, ambitious young women. There are many fine career openings right now in the Women's Army Corps. If you're between 18 and 34, a high school graduate, single and otherwise qualified, the Women's Army Corps offers you an important, interesting future while you serve your country. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station now for complete details. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>